Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to try and get some more stuff done on this car. It's uh, well, it's been a couple weeks since I've been in here. Well, actually, I came here yesterday, but uh, yeah, with all that cold weather, ooh, too cold. Negative twenties, rolling blackouts. I hope all you guys did okay. Uh, we fared okay. We didn't. Uh, we got never got our power shut off, but I know a lot of guys that did. So hope everybody did okay. Uh, I'm in Kansas here, so. I mean, it probably it wasn't near as bad as Texas, but yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, we'll try to get some more done on this thing. Update on what we've got done so far. I got the wiring done on the on the pumps. Got them all labeled. Fuel pump one, fuel pump two. Got a check valve in here because this will be pump one that'll run all the time, and we don't want it to backfeed and go back into the tank so we got a check valve here this will only turn on with the hob switch once it hits like four pounds of boost and we got the wiring going up into the trunk right now this is the return line going to the tank and of course the pressure line this car had a really neat uh, hole right here it was for uh, the vent lines going to the tank and then they went up to where the, uh, the tank fill was. And then comes out right there. The pumps, I did have the pumps here, but I couldn't get two dash eights in that hole plus a dash six. So I decided to move the pumps. Plus they push better than they pull. So it's better to get it back to the closer to the tank. Yeah, get all this stuff mounted. I still need to put some kind of a mount there. Running alongside here. Then they wire off and go up to the rails. Oh yeah, then we put uh, put some new struts on it. The driver's side strut was bent, so it needed struts anyways. Hopefully the camber will be okay. Got the skinnies on it. <laughs> Looking good. Haven't set it back down on the ground yet. Get the fuel system. I want to get the fuel system all finished up so we can put this this inner liner back in to cover up all this stuff. And then put the wheel back on. Put our beadlock back on. Put it back on the ground. I want to see what it looks like. But right now we're going to work on. We need to feed these two lines from here. I'm gonna run uh, dash 10, just with dash 10 to here, and dash 10 to here. A little bit overkill, but yeah, you know, got two dash 10s there, two dash 10s there, why not? I'm gonna use hard line. Got a big roll of aluminum here. Got the, the sleeve. And the nut, the tube nut. And then, yeah, we'll straighten this all out. Straighten that coil all out. Make it bent, bend it all up how we want it. And we'll flare the ends. Put the tube nuts on. And be good to go. I'm going to bend a couple up. And then, uh, oh yeah, we also got, got the dash eight, which we're going to use for the vent. We've got a rollover slash vent up there on the tank. We're going to use that to bend it out. Probably run it out here somewhere. Whatever's more handy, maybe over here. But I'll be back. One thing I wanted to mention is uh, if you guys ever uh, want to flare this aluminum, you can flare aluminum, copper, I don't see the other one. Brass. When you flare this stuff for AN fittings, uh, AN fitting is, is a Army Navy, right? So uh, they use a 37 degree flare. And this is the one I have by Imperial. And it'll do 37 degrees, which is the degree of this cone here. And the degrees, uh, this here is 37 degrees 
like on your uh, like transmission lines, brake lines, and stuff like that, they use a 45 degree, which is what this one is, just without the broken broken parts. But they'll have a die and everything that you put in there, and you'll like kind of like do a bubble flare. You know, take that out and then flare it again. So it's called, called double flare, and those are usually 45 degree. So if you do decide to go with aluminum, make sure you do the 37 degree Army Navy AN. All right, got a little bit more done. That's the this is the the vent rollover valve. It's got a little check ball in there, so if the car rolls, it will you know seat the little ball and the fuel won't be able to come out here. But in normal operation, it's just the vent that we don't suck this thing into like a little pop can. Just goes out that little hole. And I don't think I've showed the. There's a return line going down there. You send the other side. And there's the lines all bent up. Just aluminum. 5H2 dash 10. I think I'm going to make a bracket for here to hold these two together just so they don't wiggle. They kind of wiggle a little bit. There's the vent coming out. Probably gonna make a bracket for that too. Probably just get a grommet so it'll be nice and tight. But that's what we got done for today. Didn't put a whole much time into it, but we'll come back tomorrow and get some more stuff done. Okay, for our next little thing to make, we're gonna work on the drive shaft loop. And I'm gonna use this thing here. Not sure what it was. This this one down here was the uh, carrier bearing because I had a two-piece drive shaft. But this one was probably just some kind of a some kind of cover of some cover of some sort. This one here. So the rules stay: you're supposed to be within six inches. The loop is supposed to be within six inches of the U joint, so we're perfect to use this thing here. So we're gonna use a little bit of. A little bit of liquid wrench here and that vice and probably just and your another thing you're supposed to use is uh, two inch by quarter inch steel to go around the drive shaft so this piece of tube should be a pretty good size so I'm just gonna warm this up bend it around the tube weld it together and then maybe make some brackets make some brackets to to bolt into these bolts here, here, or maybe you'll just weld it on there, make it solid. I don't know, probably better just to make it unboltable. Is that a word? Unboltable. <laughs> so my aluminum tube idea didn't work out so great, so I had this piece of six inch. I welded it to the table, and I've already heated up this part and got it bent that little bit so we'll just kind of continue going down until we get it nice and straight and I'll probably bend the tabs up and then uh, drill and tap these most likely uh, we'll see how it goes Parker more gas more gas Now I'm going to bend the little tabs.
right, so I had a little design change. These were way too big to fit inside that little little uh, transmission tunnel. Got it in there. So I was like, well, instead of cutting this down and changing it, I'll just use it on something else. So I came up with this one. It's going to be a two-piece like this other one. But this one's going to be, uh, I had it one piece at first. And then I cut it because this was too narrow for the drive shaft to fit through. So then I just cut it in half. I got tabs on it. This portion is going to get welded into the car. And they're, I don't know if you can see that. They're, I tapped them. So this will be in the car all the time. And when he takes his drive shaft, I just have to take this bottom piece off with his bolts. All kinds of extra GM bolts. So yeah, I'll go weld that thing in there. Okay, so we got this all welded in. Now we'll try the drive shaft. I got three hands. <laughs> This is hot. This is hot. Kind of hot. Ow. Yep. Still hot. Still hot. Alright. I like it. All kinds of room up in there. We got plenty of room under here just in case we go with a solid solid rear axle sometime. You know this will be able to move up and down inside there. We got plenty of room. I like it. I give it a paint job now. Well I think this is gonna be it for this video. Uh, yeah I've got a lot of weeks worth of crap to put in one video so see ya. It's just nuts and bolts.